the allure behind undervolting is undeniable. And yes, oftentimes it's seen as a method of saving power, of increasing battery life on your Steam Deck. And while I agree with those assertions on the LCD, can the same really be said about the OLED Steam Deck? The idea behind undervolting your Steam Deck is that you literally reduce the amount of power that can go to your CPU or any other components in your Steam Deck. If you've updated to the latest version of SteamOS on Stable Branch or even Preview or Beta, then you should have access to undervolting. So yes, while all Steam Decks have access to undervolting, not all Steam Decks can undervolt effectively. This is due to the silicon lottery, and ultimately some chips just aren't as good as others when it comes to undervolting or even overclocking. The only way to know for certain is to try it out for yourself and test it out extensively to make sure that, you know, your undervolts are stable. So you may be asking yourself, why bother undervolting? Well, if you undervolt properly, undervolting can confer you a number of different benefits. But before that, if you like this video or any other video I make, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high-tech low life lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well. First and foremost being better thermals. Less electricity flowing to your PC means less heat generated, which means better temperatures. If your steam deck gets too hot, then your CPU will start to slow down in an attempt to manage the heat. A lower temperature means your steam deck can run at maximum clock speeds for longer. In a normal computer, this may lead to performance increases, but on a steam deck, performance increases are minimal. Lowering the temperature also has an added benefit. Because there's less heat, your fans won't have to work nearly as hard, which in turn means the fans run quieter. The second major benefit is of course battery life. The battery life should increase because, simply put, it's using less energy. Now granted, the values that are given to you in the BIOS aren't massive reductions in voltage, but it is a reduction nonetheless, and it can add up. But there are some downsides to undervolting as well. First and foremost, if you take an undervolt too far, then your system may not be able to boot at all, potentially not even the BIOS. Now granted, I don't know of many cases where people have had to RMA their Steam decks due to a bad undervolt volt, but apparently friend of the channel Cryobite has heard of one such an issue, so if you're going to go through undervolting, it's best to validate that your undervolt is actually stable. So before I get started, this is a PSA. Undervolting your Steam Deck too far could cause issues with your Steam Deck, and if you're worried about that, then maybe consider not undervolting. And of course, I'm not responsible if you damage your device due to undervolting, just so you know. To undervolt, you'll need to turn off your Steam Deck entirely, like power it off completely. You'll need to hold up volume up and power on to get to the BIOS. Once you're in the BIOS, go to Setup Utility. All undervolting settings can be found under the Advanced tab. Scroll down and you'll see all of these voltage offset settings. You'll see these voltage offset settings go down by increments of 10 millivolts. The safest way to undervolt your device is to essentially go down by 10 millivolts. You'll then want to extensively test your Steam Deck for stability. A lot of people recommend using M Prime. It's a stress tester that specializes in CPU workloads. Some will stress test using this for 24 hours. Others like to stress test with modern AAA titles. Modern AAA titles are quite graphically demanding, and as such, they will serve as a sort of makeshift stress test. But if you need a graphically demanding free-to-play title that actually works on the Steam Deck, then Halo Infinite is your friend. After you stress test and make sure that you're stable, you can then go down by another 10 millivolts. Repeat the stress testing and then keep doing this until you either A, hit negative 50 millivolts stable, or B, crash during stress testing. I've also tried out No Rest for the Wicked, made by the same guys that made the Ori games. In its early access state, it is quite graphically demanding, and as such, it's served as a pretty good stress test. I've managed to play this for an extended period of time without any sort of weird issues. No instability or crashing now, it's been a couple of hours as well. I've also tested out the Cyberpunk benchmark, you know, Cyberpunk is still quite a demanding game. As you can see here, it's stress testing my GPU. My GPU usage is very high, so yes, this does count as a stress test. But the big question is, how much power can one really save by undervolting? That's the big question anyone wants to ask, and I'm here to answer it. I'm here to answer it with a test of my own. We're gonna test undervolting on two different games, both at fairly extreme ends of the spectrum. First is Celeste, and second is Cyberpunk. Celeste absolutely sips on power on the Steam Deck, boasting very impressive battery life on the Steam Deck OLED. The settings are consistent between both tests, the only difference is the undervolting amount. With one test having no undervolting at all, and the other test having a total maximum undervolt. We're gonna begin by testing out stock voltages, so let's begin then.
10 hours and 49 minutes is a very impressive amount of time to be playing Celeste. Granted, I did just stand there and do nothing, and I'm sure that had I actually been playing the actual game itself, it would probably be a lot lower. Let's see how much of a difference undervolting makes by itself. Nothing else. That's weird, it's only a 4 minute difference. Now granted, yes, this is 4 minutes. And yes, any amount of battery life gained is good. But I feel like this might be just a margin of error. But this is a far cry from my very own experience with the Steam Deck LCD. Is it possible that undervolting the OLED just doesn't give that much of a benefit? Or maybe the benefit just can't be seen on an indie game like Celeste. Maybe it's time to test out on a modern AAA title, like Cyberpunk 2077. For this test, we'll just be using Steam Deck presets. To ensure nothing gets in our way, we're going to be disabling TDP and manual GPU clock speeds. And while I understand Cyberpunk will never reasonably hit 90 FPS, I'm going to leave my Steam Deck OLED at 90Hz for both tests. One test running at stock voltages and the other running at undervolted voltages. But we're going to test out stock voltages first. So without further ado, let's begin then. Two hours and one minute and 14 seconds. Just to clarify, this was done with stock voltages. Now we undervolt our Steam Deck all the way down to minus 50 on all categories and see how that fares. See if that nets us any additional benefits. I suppose an extra 4 minutes isn't a whole lot of extra time, but an additional 4 minutes is extra time indeed. But these undervolting results aren't very consistent with my own results with the Steam Deck LCD. Like let's take a look at this graph. With both Celeste and Cyberpunk, the needle barely moved. Like this is margins of error levels of difference. And of course I consulted with Cryobite33. His main theory is that due to the fact that the OLED is just a more efficient machine overall, there's less gains to be had by undervolting. At least compared to the Steam Deck LCD, which I've seen an upwards of 25% increased battery life when undervolting. So on the battery life side of things, it seems like undervolting didn't really make that much of a difference, at least not compared to the LCD. Yes, a few minutes extra battery life is still pretty good, but it isn't the battery life saver that it was on the Steam Deck LCD. So what even is the point of undervolting the Steam Deck OLED? Well, as stated before, there are a number of other benefits that one can get from undervolting. In certain cases, you can see better performance. You can even see better thermals as well. And with better thermals comes better fan noise. Your fan won't need to run as fast or as loudly. And while these tests may not necessarily show it, these are benefits that you can feel. So undervolting is still very much worth it, but just go into it with different expectations on the OLED because on the battery side of things, the OLED's already pretty efficient. Sure, a good undervolt will save you a couple of minutes of battery here and there, but I firmly believe most of your battery savings will come from how you set up stuff in the quick access menu. These settings are easy to use and there's no risk of permanent damage. 
Anything you do in these settings can be reversed very easily. And if you want more information on that, there will be an upcoming Steam Deck Masterclass video. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description. 